Sutherland. G'day mates, I'm Max Atlas Anderson. I am claiming the caster desk with Andy Vettius Day and Zach Rusty Pie, the New South Welshman flanking the Welshman. I'm this sure there's a exciting. joke here somewhere. One Welshman and two Aussies. Walk into Welshman, a casting we've desk. It. We've got it. Yeah, you already said the joke. <laughs> <laughs> a little bit lost here. <laughs> but we're here for the IWCA final, and it's all come down to this. I don't. I wasn't expecting these two teams to be the one, ones in it either. No, I certainly wasn't expecting Southeast Asia to make it this far. I thought that we were going to have a Japanese versus Turkey final, uh, but it seems that Japanese looking a little bit shaky. Whereas Southeast Asia, yes, it was quite a back and forth game, but they definitely were able to close out that first summoner's rift and have a pretty dominant assassin performance. They most certainly did. But let's get a rundown of our All-Stars hitting the rift. On the blue side, representing Southeast Asia, the Vietnamese All-Stars. In the top lane, it will be QTV. In the jungle, it will be Levy. In the mid lane, it will be Opitimus, AD Carry Celebrity, and Ron OP in the support position. Meanwhile, facing off against them on the red side are the All-Stars representing Japan. In the top lane, it is Evi. In the jungle, is Tussle. Their mid lane is Saros, and their bottom lane is Hereti on AD Carry, and their support Dara. And you have to remember both of these teams may be unexpected to get here, but they're also very strong individual mechanical players. And that's the biggest thing we have to hit, the 1v1 prowess that they may all have, the assassin capabilities that they all have, sets them perhaps one step above their opponents to get here. So we're basically hoping for a Summoner's Rift victory by one team and then the Assassin Mode victory by the other so that we can see this 1v1. Because that is, that is going to be high. definitely what we want. We want all three games. We want as much action as possible. Uh, and I just want to see as much League of Legends as we can. Yeah. And how this all started off, of course, Japan coming out very, very strong. Of course, it was a three-game series that time around. Southeast Asia very, very clean against Turkey, which was unexpected. And Levy would be riding the hugest high right now. Like, just completely ridiculous. Yeah. Do you have a feeling that that could help, you know, snowball things off here for Southeast yeah, Asia? Yeah, I think we have to just highlight the momentum that Southeast Asia will yeah. actually have coming into this first game. It may have been assassin mode, so it's not exactly the same champions, but that feeling of confidence yeah. that you get from just getting a win in general could be enough to get them starting on the right foot, which is exactly what you need in a Summoner's Rift game, where everybody's playing really calm and slowly. Yeah, exactly right. And you're expecting more tanks towards the top side of the map. We saw a cannon. That was fantastic. That was super fun. Good. I'm really happy that we actually got to saw, uh, saw, see a cannon because it's just nice to see that Courage of the Colossus isn't the only thing that you can run in the top half of the map. That's exactly right. But let's get into champ select for this Summoner's Rift game. First off, it is going to be Cassiopeia banned away alongside Olaf, and Rek'Sai is going to be removed from the Rift. So just remember, ladies and gentlemen, that because uh, Jap uh, Japan were the highest seed coming in, they did go 4-0 and zero during the group stages, whereas Southeast Asia went 3-1. and one. They got choice of sides, and they've actually elected to go for the red side for some reason. Interesting. Yeah, and to me, I guess the last pick seems to be more important for them, giving Seros something like a counter pick to Optimus, who has looked fantastic in that middle lane. I wonder whether or not it is for Seros or whether or not it's going to be for Dara, because to uh, talking to Mithy a lot, he has said the importance of getting that counter pick support and making sure that you have that powerful bottom line. Yeah, and even one step further, they've been highlighted as perhaps the weakest lane out of all of the LJL sides, so getting a strong 2v2 could be quite important. Well, Lee Sin going to be the final ban there by Southeast Asia. Interestingly, because I could imagine that Levy probably would like to play the champion. Quite good on that one. Now, Japan have left Kazakhs open. Uh, uh -huh. Obviously, that was an Assassin's mode, but the possibility of it coming out onto Summoner's Rift isn't completely impossible. Not when there's a Rek'Sai, Olaf, and Lee Sin already off the board, so there's definitely a higher <laughs> yeah. probability. We'll be diving into the secondary jungle options as Syndra is going to hit the bench once again. We'll get into first picks here for QTV. Poppy, going to be locked away, but Trundle is still up here for Japan to grab if they'd like to. I feel like that we may very well see a resurgence of the Maokai later on in the draft. We did see it coming out earlier on in the tournament with, honestly, some very powerful success. But you could also go for a similar approach to which uh, we saw earlier on in the day from Turkey, which is go for that cannon. You can be very aggressive up against the Poppy if you want. But I in think terms the Tom of the Kench needs to happen. Of course, of course, the Tom Kench. Evie's his, one of his well-known champions. He, oh, yeah. He has an insane Tom Kench, as his fans like to call it. And we saw it in their first game on Summoner's Rift as well. He just went completely completely to town on the Oceanic squad. I was definitely crying a little bit backstage. <laughs> However, he looked brilliant. Ash is going to be locked in alongside him here as well. Yeah, and again, the beauty of that Kench is the flexibility of it potentially going towards that support role. So whilst it's a strong top laner for Evi, it can be flexed to get a favorable matchup. However, he knows it's into the poppy, and so they may switch to something like the Tom Kench if there's an engaged tool where he has to be a supportive character. And so by taking the Ash for themselves, 
they alleviate one of those pain points they could experience. I like it. Flex picks across the board. But the Jin is going to be locked away. It's exactly what Southeast Asia want to lock in next. Looks like the lease could be the opportunity here for Levy, which would be disappointing. It certainly would be, but however, it does fit into the style of early aggressive, high ganking pressure jungler. Yep. And when you think about all of the junglers that haven't taken off the board, it does make sense that Levy would want to go towards that. Then we need to start thinking about what other junglers are actually left available that you can go towards, because there Ringo. are so many top tier junglers gone <laughs> that you do have to wonder what's really left. I mean, thinking about it, you could maybe go for... Ivan is still available. That's yeah, very that's true. a good point. Nidalee has someone that's fallen off in favor, but she could rather, she could maybe come back here. Skarner is another one I've heard talks about maybe. It's largely dependent on what Tussle still has left in the back. Zach is available as well. Yeah, actually, Zach's a big one. With the code to the option. Colossus combo. Um, Hecarim is also there. Oh, yeah, of course. This was actually something that Mithy brought out very early on in the tournament, saying that uh, there is a resurgence in the Hecarim again, because you can go for uh, just rush the Trinity Force with Code to the Colossus. Not only are you super tanky, but you have massive amounts of damage. Yeah, it's fantastic. But there's the Nautilus lock in once again. We saw Dara and Evie actually flex these two at the same time. I mean, they can switch all the way around if they'd like to. And there's the Hecarim locked away. Seros actually has it in his hands at the moment. The Clippity Clop has been known to head down the mid lane, but with no home guards, probably not going to be and Tussle is going to be grabbing that one, leaving that counter pick for Seros. Yeah, and whilst the continuation of the flex is there on the LJL side, you look at C's team composition, and they have a fair amount of pick between an Elise and a Jin already oh, there. Yeah. The Thresh Hover, actually something I would like to see, simply because it is super strong now with the courage of the Colossus Masteries, and the availability is there, but I wouldn't expect Celebrity to hover when Ron can. <laughs> I'd probably like to see something like a Victor right now for Optimus, to be honest. You just need some kind of high wave clear mid laner that can hold his own. Uh, buy time to get you to the mid game where a lot of champions like the uh, Jin and the Poppy hit their spikes. And when you combine that with an Elise as well, you have high pressure early jungle, scaling well into the mid and late game with the Victor and the Jin. Well, that's precisely Ooh. what they've done. Victor is going to be locked away as Ron OP is going to grab that Thresh, making Rusty happy. And now no, all of yeah. us are happy because Zillion's been locked in. Saros is on his signature champion. Japan looking like they've put together a team composition based on the champions that they like playing. Oh, yep. yeah. <laughs> I was happy for a very different reason, Atlas. It was not the Thresh. Yep. It was definitely the Zillion. Of course, oh, his yeah. signature champion, historically his best champion in every single wildcard event that he goes to. And it seems to be timeless for this player <laughs> that he can still play the Zillion. Thank you for laughing. That's fair. <laughs> no one else will. Yeah. And when you look at the Zillion in the comp as well, it actually works very nicely <laughs> with the Hecarim, too, because it speeds him up incredibly quickly. Oh, God, yeah. Yeah. It's setting up for those more damage very as nicely. well, and it's more peel for the Ash as well. You are putting a lot of pressure onto Haretti, and this is going to be the big question for him because a lot of debate has been coming out as to how well he's going to be able to perform during this tournament. He's made it this far. Now the pressure is being put on him. Can he perform? Well, we'll see. Certainly very, very soon. I'm excited to see what they are going to be able to do now that the Zillion is on the Rift one more time because he can be delivering that experience around. And how's that going to work with the new jungle here as well? Could that maybe change the landscape here for the Hecarim player? Oh, you thought that the level 3 gang was bad. What yeah. if the jungle is level 4? <laughs> exactly. <laughs> now, I think there's actually a lot you have to look at when we're talking about this. Maybe giving the Hecarim extra experience, even just going towards the top side of the map, working as a top three-man unit and giving experience everywhere. They could be just destroying the jungle. Well, think Things could certainly get ridiculous, and we want you to hop over to Twitter to let us know all about it. A tweet at LOL Esports, the hashtag SEA win if you think that Southeast Asia can do it, or the hashtag JPN win if you think that Japan can take them down after their victory earlier on in the day. Southeast Asia looked brilliant in the last Assassin Mode match that we saw, and we'll see whether they can carry it through here against Seros's signature Zillion as we hop on to Summoner's Rift for the final here at IWCA. And remember, ladies and gentlemen, the winner of this will be joining Team Fire for the main All-Stars event along with North America and the other wildcard region, uh, North America. I mean, <laughs> Korea is not a wildcard region. That is, I definitely <laughs> got those two uh, confused. I feel like you've been, you've been like working on that one for <laughs> oh, so I long. I that... Oh, jeez. <laughs> also, funnily enough, both being of Team Fire in this final. Yeah. Yeah. Just, just Team Makes Fire everywhere. Well, Tussle, wandering around, looking magnificent. That particular skin.
So in terms of the early game for both these teams, I imagine that it will mainly be about farming. Uh, the bottom lane is quite an interesting matchup because you have Jin Thresh, a matchup that we actually haven't seen uh, for a very long time. With the introduction of Courage of the Colossus, there was discussion about whether or not we would see Thresh back in the meta. And when you are, when you know that the Nautilus is going out in either the top lane or support, you know it's either going to be Tom Kench or Nautilus, and that makes it a little bit better to pick up that Thresh pick. Yeah, Thresh also aiding quite heavily towards the picks from laning phase. Levy should actually have this propensity towards perhaps the bottom side where yeah. he can gank and have Ron either throw the lantern to him to go in. He can hit the cocoon or the hook or flay can even connect on top of that. Couple that with Celebrity's W to lock down. And if one piece of crowd control hits, the rest does. Well, there's actually just so much crowd control coming out of that bottom lane. Anyway, Sarah's going to help out with the leash. Throws a bomb on top of Tussle's head. Dara going to help just using the Titan's Wrath to tank up the blue guy for a little while. We'll see how the horse goes roaming around this jungle. They'll be doing the same thing on the opposite side of the map. So none of this cheeky red buff into Krug's business, getting the level 3 extraordinarily early. We'll see what the junglers are going to do this time. Yeah, it will mean that GPL's bottom lane will get the early push. Um, which is always the advantage when you have melee on melee matchup because you have the pick potential as we were just discussing with the Thresh. Um, and getting that early level two is going to make that kill pressure so much greater. So good start for them. Meanwhile, in the mid lane. Yeah, Optimus, I believe. Yep, that evens out the trade quite nicely. Level two going to be gained by Optimus first. A little bit of extra control. Smart ward from Ron. Uh, moving up into mm -hmm. the river to make sure that that cheeky level three gang that we were just discussing mm -hmm. didn't come out from Tussle. So they are well prepared. They can play as aggressively as they want now after just hitting that level two. I guess the cool thing is the awareness as well from Ron in terms of timing when to put the ward down. So when they start on the red side, it's about 20 seconds quicker than that on the blue side, knowing that he has to do an extra camp. So very well timed in particular from Ron. Oh, Tussle now chucking down some wards of his own. Going to kill this horde of raptors. Try and get himself even further through this jungle route. We'll see whether he goes first, as far as that gank is concerned. So in terms of early pushing, it looks like that the majority of the GPL squad are actually having the advantage because Cyrus took a couple unfavorable trades early on, which forced him back underneath his turret. In the top lane, QTV just had slightly stronger wave clear, so he's also got himself the push. And this gives Levy quite a few options as to where he wants to go, but he needs to prioritize on vision because when you're extending that far in so many different lanes, it becomes harder for him to predict where the ganks will come. Well, the pings did go down. Japan does know that Levy is waiting here, the but Hoodhawk's Hoodhawk's on, gonna though. land. Fantastic layering of CC as the exhaust there. Harry Eddy, oh my goodness, he's going to die. Took him a long time, first blood. As GPL just take down the first kill. He does do well to stop Levy from getting an assist of any kind, That's recognizing that he was dead, making the best of a bad situation. But the timing of that gank was incredible from Levy and the hook from Ron OP. You hit one, now he's warmed up. It could be more to follow. Yeah. I mean, I'm honestly very surprised that Dara didn't even consider to drop a ward. When you're getting pushed underneath your turret, I would have even predicted that at least may come for a dive, her ability to dive. Hang on, Tussle popping the ghost. Yeah, great. Yeah. Yeah. Heavy looking pretty hungry here up towards the top side of the map. Decent heroic charge to create some distance there from the Tom Kench, but Tussle does have the red buff. Rampage is going to be in there as well, but I think the Poppy's made it back to safety. No flash needed. Yeah, it's actually really hard to gank a Poppy as heck him in any situation simply because the W is there, but we do get to see this kill in the bottom again. So you can see Heredi, he walks up to try and get the last hit, and that was just such a smart hook from Ron OP. In all honesty, Heredi, you have to criticize him a little bit because if he wants to get that farm, he should have moved in behind the caster creeps, so he would have had at least a protection from that front line, but didn't end up doing it, gets picked off. As you rightly said, he doesn't give the assist over to uh, the Elise, but goal still achieved. Yeah, Saros just going to speed himself up to get himself away from the Elise, but some decent damage from Optimus. We'll send him back home for the moment. A little bit of a lead here by Optimus in the mid lane on the victor. Yeah, now Celebrity CS. is acting like a jungler. Oh. Because again, this is what it's all about. Now bottom lane, Ron hits a hook. They follow it up with everything else that they have. Oh. Ooh. Yeah, not going to land the dredge line just yet. Large minion wave now for Celebrity to clean up underneath this turret. Dragon could be potentially looked at. It is going to be the Mountain Drake first up. Possible siege potential. That's a big crit. But we haven't had a look towards the top side of the map just yet. How does the old uh, Tom Kench, now that that passive is on his passive as opposed to his ultimate, uh, help him fare in this top lane matchup against the tank? I mean, 
Have you ever seen the Maokai versus Poppy matchup? I love that one. Have you ever seen the Maokai versus Nautilus matchup? Love that one too. Um, I would very much say that the Poppy versus Tom Kench matchup is very similar where they tend to slap each other in the face the quite a lot. Fight? You're telling yeah. me that there's two tanks right now that are hitting each other? <laughs> Thanks, Vidius. <laughs> <laughs> Just wanted to, uh, you know. That's why you're here. That's why sweet here, you know? breakdowns. <laughs> hey man, asking you sure receive. <laughs> <laughs> that was a very good point. Levy is going to be discovered. Wow, that is actually surprise bloom. Surprise! That was actually much longer than I thought it would. I actually thought that only went as far as the other plant, uh, as you can see in the back end of the bottom jungle. But yep. that actually goes all the way through the jungle. Mm. Able to spot out Levy, so now they know he's in the bottom half. This is going to allow Evie to be uh, more aggressive in the top lane. Oh, so uh, aggressive. <laughs> Licking the poppy over and over again. It's now wards removed. Board. Yeah, super aggressive. I think the idea is like placing a ward like that is for the sake of the hook, but it has the double entendre of being able to spot Tussle if he tries to lane gank, and Hecarim is quite good at that with the Nautilus on his team. Just canters his way in. Ooh, gank the voyage. Mid. Yeah, Evie really wants to try and lock down Optimus, but the cleanse comes in. He's able to create some distance. Chaos Storm doing some work as Cocoon lands onto the catfish. But wanders casually away. It's pretty strong right now. Star is Riptide's not going to find Celebrity. No more to come out of that one. Yeah, and the availability to roam from the top side of the map, Evie, once again acknowledging where the Elise would be. He was at the right place at the right time once again. So Levy actually doing a good job of stealing away the camps. They have pressure on the bot side of the map to move aggressively up. Dara's going to do what he can, but given that Tussle has already been forced back, there's not much that they're going to be able to do with this. And denying that away from Saras will help um, Optimus just in the mid lane in terms of being able to get the push up. But because of how much mana Saras has, it's not going to hurt him too much. Yeah. Yeah, in saying that as well, though, the item build that Optimus has gone for is very inefficient for a Victor in terms of upgrading his Hex oh, Core. Yes, yes. So the wave clear that Seros has, even without the blue buff, will be superior to that of Optimus until he actually upgrades it. And it means that he can get pushed under the turret if Seros chooses to do so. Yeah, and that is the worst feeling, isn't it, when you can't get that first upgrade on the first back? All right, Levy. He's going to start off this blue buff. Optimus is at least going to get that. We're going to be feeling a little bit better as the Hawk Shot's going to spy out exactly what's going on. So more information now for Japan as the backs are coming in from Southeast Asia on the bottom side of the map. Could be an opportunity to make some form of play, but Ebi also going to do the same thing. So as we discussed uh, during Champion Select, it is likely to be a slow early game as we're seeing now. We did see that early kill in the bottom, but that was largely due to a bit of a misplay coming out from Heretti, but also good pathing from Levy. Um, the, what that's resulting in is a big CS differential between the two AD carries. And we talked about how Heredi, now a lot of focus is going to be put onto him because when you have Azillion as a mid laner, he's not really being that reliable damage dealer. So you're looking at Tussle to be a big damage dealer and Heredi. And with Heredi being at this big of a deficit, it does make you wonder how long it's going to take for Japan to really reach that point where they can start dealing the damage. Yeah, and there's a front. couple of things about this as well that accentuates it further. Evi and Hustle working together to control the top side of the map, namely with all the vision and control they're starting to place. I think the bottom side is actually where C is doing a lot more work. So the GPL team has all of their control wards and vision, so they're trying to accelerate Celebrity and Ron OP. And this is that point in the game where something's got to give. And is it going to be LJL adjusting? to all the pressure that they're placing? Or is it actually just matching on the opposite side of the map and saying, Evie can kill them, it's fine, it's a gym. It's exactly that, I mean, it, I mean, you can even see it on the minimap right now because they have pressure in the bottom lane. Levy is then helping out the mid to make sure they have control over the bottom half of the map. Is Evie now going aggressive? Hey guys, there's a sick mid. 1v1 going on right here. As the heroic charge is used by QTV Can't to wait. get himself out, but doesn't have the stun. Evie just munching on him. Flash is not going to be used by the time Kench, but the ultimate's there from Tussle. Can he do the dive? I don't think so. There's no Elise there. Oh no, decided to look for it now as Abyssal Voyage is going oh! to get the time Kench in, but QTV locks down that kill, doesn't get the stun, and Evie's just going to eat the grey health and wander out. But that's a one for one, you'll take that as the poppy. So Evie actually tried to come in and provide support for his jungler. He even flashed to get the Kasum, but it was just a little bit too late. Tussle, note that he actually hesitated a little bit on the dive because he wanted to build up his charge to get the maximum amount of damage out as he possibly could. But because he bought that time, it bought time for QTV's cooldowns as well. So the, the fact that QTV was able to buy time and draw two members up to the top half of the map is now going to enable GPL to get this first mountain drake. Yeah, and it is going to be spotted by the Hawkshot. However, not a whole lot they can do about it, especially with Levy able to uh, smite that one away quite easily. Doesn't. He's going to be taken Never by the gin. Yeah, they're just eating each other. Poppy. 
going to channel the ultimate because he's sick of it. Just sick of this business. Look at him. Well, it is a red buff, Tom Kench, <laughs> with about say, 17 yeah, that, minions. That yeah. red buff is actually doing a huge amount of work. And um, one thing that people have to remember about uh, the Tom Kench is that it's actually better to keep that stack on for as long as you can. So the reason for it is because you do more damage the more stacks that are on the target. The consume early makes a lot of sense because it removed the ability for Poppy to disengage with the ultimate. Mm -hmm. He then gets the three stacks, so he gets stunned up, buys enough time for Tussle to come. And this is where the indecision comes, because Evie could flash over the wall, backs away, and then Tussle decides to ult. So there's now split decision. Tussle feels that there's enough damage for him to go for the dive. He buys time with the heroic charge, but then QTV is able to get that bit of shield back, and then he just is able to get the outplay. So really good stuff from QTV to, to be able to get a one for one, at least in that exchange. Yeah, Dangerous Game also playing a big part there. If he had got the stun afterwards with the heroic charge against the tower, mm -hmm. could have almost made that a two for nothing. But thankfully for Japan, they were able to come out with at least a kill. And onto their Tarm Kench as well, who they want to get as tanky and huge and unkillable as possible. Absolutely, you'd expect something along the lines of the Sunfire Cape soon for Evie, and then there's nothing QTV can even imagine doing to him. The street does go both ways, but it also means that the Jin, who has gone for a Ghostblade first, will be using that to run away, you would expect. Yeah, how do you feel about the Ghostblade now that it is the Lethality, doesn't have the attack speed on the active anymore as well for a, a, a Jin, We have seen a lot more of the Essence Reavers recently. Well, ooh, we might not have time for that as Tussle comes in the bot. Yeah. Oh, good dodge with the lantern there. Celebrity gets himself out, but the fear is still there from Tussle. Box comes in. Ron OP just trying to sacrifice himself as Evie really wants to kill the Jin. Doesn't care about this tower at all, but Ron, he's still alive. They're going for this dive, but I don't know whether it's going to work. Meanwhile, in the mid lane, Seraph just gets obliterated. Doesn't even ult himself. Decides that, you know, the death chamber is where he wants to be. I mean, the dive works well enough on the bottom side of the map for the moment, as celebrities just saying hello yeah, might try and fish in a something. barrel down here at the moment, but they're just going to ignore it. Because Evi knows exactly no, what he wants, and that's the tower. Yeah. Below the rest of the map, four members, Evi now. Yeah, what is this? They have taken down the tower. Good Repel gets the Elise up into the sky, but Evi, he's going to fall Whoa, down. It's a double Levy. kill immediately there for Levi. His celebrity is in trouble. Tussle, oh my oh. god, so close. Shutdown comes in as the <laughs> spider eventually falls, and I think that that was a one trade by... Southeast Asia, this and they get a not, tower. This could not have been a better trade for the GPL. Not only do they get the tower in the top lane, they've gotten so much damage down onto the tier one in the mid lane. They get themselves, I believe, three, maybe even four kills in the bottom lane. Just everything went so well, and it was because Japan invested so many resources and got such little gain out of it. And he didn't activate his ghost blade. <laughs> <laughs> inefficient. That's the most right important there. part. So inefficient. <laughs> Let's watch the replay of the unused ghost blade in the bottom. So, firstly, it was a good lantern to get out of the ash arrow. Evie decides that Celebrity's not going to ult, which is why this happens. Seros, remember, doesn't use his ultimate. He just dies. I believe the duration of the stun was sufficient oh for that with a lot of damage. And this has worked out good for them on the bottom side of the map. But they don't have enough minions collectively to actually take the turret out in time for Levy to actually get in early as he has a red buff. It certainly does. <laughs> There's that? another Abyssal Voyage as the arrow flies through. Optimus has to cleanse immediately. Good tongue lash there as the hook lands onto the Tom Kench, but he just doesn't care. To be perfectly frank with you, not even with his Sunfire Cape built up just yet, he's just that tanky. Behind in farm just a bit, a celebrity's trying to take down this red buff, and this uh, action has abated for the moment. And I feel like the big thing we really need to talk about here is just the, the jungle difference between Levy and Tussle right now, because when you look at the bands that came out early on, the Rek'Sai, the Olaf, and the Lee Sin, those are very well known for being Tussle's junglers. And now that he's being forced on to Hecarim as Ron gets hooked up. Yeah, it's a hook battle right here as the box goes down as well. Dara's going to be the first one to fall, but does have the ultimate from Seros. So survives for the moment. Death Charge comes in as Dara's doing the very best that he can to continue being alive. Bombs come down, but Levy's just going to eat that one up. He just doesn't care. The wall bangs in, and Seros is going to fall down. Southeast Asia just playing out of their minds this game. Yeah, they're definitely starting to pop off here from the Southeast Asian side. Heredi does not do enough in that fight. He sits back and only throws out his W, 
Maybe could have went the cooldown reduction build if he decided that was the route he was going to go. However, C starting to accelerate more and more. Yeah, there's the Dark Passage to be taken by Levy. Oh, not going to land the Cocoon. There's a whole lot of buttons being used, but one flash is all that is needed from Evie. But it doesn't matter because they're getting objectives on the map, and this is what matters for GPL. Remember when we saw Japan play earlier on in the day? They didn't get their first tower until 40 minutes into the game. Objective control does not seem to be their forte. And when trying to play around this blue buff, just look at the setup. You've got an Ash underneath the turret. You've got Evie up near his mid lane turret, and they're starting a fight. Tussle diving onto Celebrity without any form of support whatsoever, and is just being left to the masses. The actual setup coming out from Japan just wasn't there, and it was a guaranteed loss before they'd even started. And remember, the biggest member of the LJL side was yeah. completely zoned by the Victor Gravity Field, so there was no way in for him in that fight either. Zero damage sums it up. Yeah, we were talking about Levy popping off, and he's done it again. Doesn't need the Kha'Zix to do a heck of a lot of damage. He's going to do over 2k on the Elise at about 15 minutes into the game, which is not bad at all. And this is why we have to backtrack to pick and bounce because you have to wonder why Japan didn't put more priority on the Elise. I feel like that we were struggling to think of what jungler's tussle could go on to, and I imagine Japan was doing the same thing because they saw the Elise come out and they go, okay, let's just go. Oh, no, we can't go that because that's banned. Oh, that's also banned. And and now we kind of have no junglers left that are good in terms of early game pressure, and that is exactly what Tussle is known for. And uh, in terms of the difference now, Levy is the one having all this impact, and especially in these team fights. Yeah, when we look at Tussle's impact in the team fights in particular, he's doing a lot of damage and pushing away celebrities, stopping the ultimates and things like that, but there's not much else. Yeah, Bissel Voyage comes in as Evie is going to trap Optimus. Rock and a hard place is an understatement here, but no. a fantastic gravity oh, field wow. and flashes to get out of the way of the Onslaught of Shadows. QTV just bonks him with a hammer, gets in the heck back to dodge. And that's a second Mountain Drake now for the GPL at the same time. They are doing everything on this map. Objective control is the name of the game for GPL. That is another dragon given away just because Japan decided to invest all of their resources into trying to get a kill on the top half of the map. They don't get the kill. They lose the dragon. And now GPL just continue to extend their already dominant game. Well, you were talking about the scaling, Rusty, as Seros, oh, he's in a heck of a lot of trouble. Does have the flash, gets himself out, lots of movement speed, so he's going to be okay. But no, Rusty, you were talking about scaling, and is this too bad at the moment for Japan? I mean, 5,000 gold isn't that much, and they do have things like the Hecarim that can get very, very big. I mean, we have to highlight team composition again, so we bring it back to the scaling and how it's going to pan out. They have a lot of wave clear on the side of the LJL with a zillion. The Ash is able to control and prevent dives with the arrow being there. Nautilus and Tom Kench make diving nigh on impossible as well to follow through with, and so they have to have some kind of team composition on the GPL side to counteract that. The objective control first is there. So two Mountain Drakes settles it. Seros is in trouble as well. Yep, Dark Passage is going to be taken there by Optimus as he just bonks himself into the box wall. And uh, it is going to be a bad news story as the Perfect Hexcoy is going to be able to lock him down. The rest of Japan have made it here, but they are too late. Curtain Call comes down. Celebrity, a lot of protection as Dara is going to take the first bullet. Titan's Wrath helps him tank up the rest. It should be okay, but it's now five versus four. You have to question the decision-making from Saros right there. Moving towards the Rift Hell, trying to gain vision without any support from your team. You didn't even use the bombs to check the brush. You end up getting punished, and now GPL are looking to take this tower. Well, there's the Poppycopter as the Warbang comes in. Evie needs to eat the Grey Health. He is going to survive for the moment as there are so many shields. QTB, he's in trouble. He's just going to get eaten by the Tom oh, Ken. Wow. Massive damage comes through, and Southeast Asia are going to grab two. Easy pickup. Not for done. Oh, Tussle, that was ambitious as he is going to get shot in the back of the head by the Jin. Ron, he's still <laughs> all right. Oh, takes the bomb to his teammates as he falls down. And Levy's going to take a red buff in celebration. So that ends up being oh, a three goodness. for two in favor of Southeast Asia is now they're moving Ooh. in towards the tier 2 turret. Celebrity, he wants blood. Yeah, the crit's going to be used to take down the turret instead as Seros does have a heck of a lot of movement speed. And now Optimus. Needs to head back home. Oh, teleport out from Evie. He wants flank. to find the victor. We'll see whether he can make his way in in time. Good gravity field once again. But there's a flash tongue lash. And Seros now has found celebrity as well. A lot of damage, but this time can. She's untouchable. Just takes him down. Nicely played by Evie. Currently 5-2-1. and one. The Tom Kench has just taken out two people. I would imagine it's too early to Baron at 20 minutes oh, yeah, on the definitely, dot. Definitely. But they are pinging it, and they're considering it as an option. 
We'll see what they can do. As the Ash not doing a heck of a lot of damage here against QTB as the rest of his team is going to turn up. Another Abyssal Voyage. Oh my goodness, Evie. You are an ambitious fellow as he eats the Great Health one more time. So they're doing it. Yeah, there are some red markers here as the hook is going to land onto a minion, unfortunately. And Evie's going to eat up the poppy. QTB is in a heck of a lot of trouble as these auto attacks from the Ash are not doing anything. Heredi just doesn't have the damage that he wants. Because there's the disengage. The two tanks are going to get bonked out of there. Evie is playing like a beast right now. Going for the flank, getting the two kills down onto Optimus and Celebrity, and then re-engaging onto Levy. Bear in mind, Levy has just gone for full aggressive build, and he is getting punished for it. It worked out nicely for him here. They were able to chunk out Dara. Look at the positioning of Heretti as well. He's just going to get bopped by the Vic. <laughs> that was so much yeah. damage. Uh, doesn't realize that the second Brock of the laser hadn't come out yet. Poor mispositioning from him. Tussle with that. That was a random re-engage. I have no <laughs> idea why he was, he was going for that. He was trying to actually save Seros, who he thought was going to get stunned. Oh, but he's actually right. just sped himself up and got out. So, so an oopsie daisy. Um, but then you get this TP from Evie, and this is where they start to turn things around in their favor. Good flash to get that first kill. Saros was in a bit of danger, but he had his ultimate ready, so there was no uh, real threat for him. And then this is just where the re-engage comes out for Remy. In all honesty, I thought his ultimate was up again. But no, he had used the TP earlier, uses the Abyssal Voyage, and just look at how quickly Levy drops. He had a great start to the game, but now he's gone a bit greedy with his build, and he ends up getting punished for it. Yeah, and again, Evie is actually just too tanky. They thought that they could re-engage. You can see the shot calling from Vietnam in this situation, and that was to fight, to turn it around and to push the time catch under the turret. Doesn't take enough damage, ends up working out for them once again. Yeah, it was a fantastic hook coming out of Dara as well. That dredge line doing a whole lot of work, locking down the spider lady. Just couldn't hop up into the web using the repel. But Ron and Pete now just going to get some vision around this Baron. 12 to 9, so Southeast Asia still ahead. 5,000 gold is still the lead that they hold over Japan. And in terms of team fighting, GPL are consistently coming out ahead. When you have the Victor, who's now completed his Rylai's Crypto Scepter, along with the Hex Core Mark III, he's just doing an unbelievable amount of damage. Combine that with Celebrity, who's completed two and a half items, it's just going to be so difficult for the LGL, who are yet to complete their Infinity Edge on the Ash. I will say, however, the GPL side is severely missing cooldown reduction in their itemization choices. Their damage is crazy but they're not going to be able to do it all over and over. Mostly Levy is going to be the one trying to do that, and only he has the Abyssal Scepter for cooldown reduction. But do they really need it when the only threat they have to bear in mind is Heredi? Because when you look at the damage that's coming out from that team, he hasn't even completed his second item, but hang on, we don't have time for that because the Baron's pretty much dead. Yeah, just a casual Baron. It's getting Chaos Stormed as Levy's going to be able to smite that one down. All too easy here at 23 minutes. That was like... GPL just said, uh, well, we may as well take they it. They were just like, hey, uh, how's it going, Baron? We're just gonna, <laughs> we're gonna take you and we're gonna leave. And Japan were just like, hey guys, do you think the Baron's going on? <laughs> like, they, they were posturing around it. Like, you can see they set up vision moving towards the top half of that jungle, but they didn't actually drop any vision over the wall. And yeah. just, honestly, just a bit of an oversight from Japan. And this is gonna increase the gold deficit even further. It's the mistake that you make as well. It's a 50-50, are they baiting? Are they just going to hook me? Remember, it's a, got a pick hook. shot, but it's a pick team composition is, also. Yeah, yeah. So if you face check by placing vision, you will still die. Yeah. And so they just took the guess. They said, you know what, they're baiting. They've got a pick comp, it'll be fine. Obviously not, but they said that. Well, that is going to mean Baron on the side of the GPL. Looking to now push in the bottom lane. You can see Japan are ready. As they're going to stop the backs of Evi, who's just trying to start it up one more time. And one of the most devastating team comps to have a Baron is a pick composition because not only do you have to try and clear away all these minion waves, but you have to just close that gap a little bit more and you're leaving yourself susceptible to that blind hook, to that random cocoon that could just come flying out of nowhere. You follow that up with the gravity field and you're just instantly going to get popped. It's, it's such a tricky comp to play around when they are sieging with such a powerful minion force. And a few cheeky pot shots there as the buckler was pegged at that turret. But at least the wave clears okay here by Japan. 25 minutes in, not necessarily going to be able to face tank these turrets just yet with the items that they do have. This Baron buff is really helping out. They have at least got half the health bar. Optimus is moving up towards the top side, so may not necessarily have the man advantage that they were experiencing before, as the dredge line's not going to find Hello. it. is locked out. Whoa. Celebrity's in trouble, as there's a massive flank just spits him out onto the ground. Ron OP now in trouble as Tussle able to get the chase. Levy with the cocoon nicely lands it onto the horse, but there's the onslaught of shadows. The Thresh is in a heck of a lot of trouble, just gets bonked back. 
into the enemy team. Oh, good Ooh, he's out. flash as Dara gets the ward over, but you're not going to kill him with that. He's now QTV. I don't know how he got over there, but he did. And Heredia and Seros not going to be able to take down the big tank. And eventually the front line became the back line at yeah. this stage. The Tom Kench ultimate to bring Tussle in, and they work it out incredibly well, but they're still going for turrets here, see. And more. This is a big problem, as the Chaos Storm's going to do a heck of a lot of work there to Seros. Heredi has to flash. He can't kite this one out, though. That's a massive double kill there for Optimus, Great as Evie eventually makes his way in. He's just waddling after the victor as best he can. <laughs> The Tongue Lash comes in, but I just don't think he's going to be able to do it. Empowered Recall in the brush for the BM. I like it. There just wasn't a whole lot the Time Kench could do. Optimus just swagging his way through that. An abysmal team fight for Southeast Asia that Optimus is able to single-handedly turn around. He kills both Seros and Heredi, gets them a Tier 2 turret in the top lane, and then is able to just go back by himself. Really good stuff from him, but this is where it all started. Yeah, so we get to see the Tom Kench work his magic. All we heard was a random sound of a tongue swirling. We didn't know where he was going. <laughs> However, the arrow comes out, I believe, at around the exact same time. And straight on a celebrity, the last time we've seen these fights actually break out, there wasn't enough damage to kill him. But when Evie is with the Hecarim, evidently will be. However, the Vietnamese team make their decision pretty much immediately to work it on the opposite side. It was also good awareness to force a fight then and there because the victor Sweet wasn't girl. anywhere near them, but we don't have time for that. Yeah, everyone's turning up to the mid lane here now as Tussle's going to get caught in the gravity field along with Evie. Good ultimate is going to knock the horse away, but he should be able to make his way back in. Arrow, I think, hit someone, but I'm not entirely sure as we have a look on the bottom side of the map. Optimus now throws down the gravity field. Good timing on that one as Evie unable to close the gap. But look at this, GPL just running them around. Southeast Asia is just playing the map so well, constantly baiting Japan into these fights and then just immediately disengaging, slowly working their way down these tier three turrets all across the map and using this ban to its fullest potential. It has now ran out. They've picked themselves up a Zerat portal to just add insult to injury. There goes the first turret, here comes the second. And remember two Mountain Drakes and a Cloud Drake able to work towards their wind conditions almost perfectly here. Yeah, the rotations and the Siege is definitely oh. able. Oh, Dara, he's just going to get taken down here as Ron OP is going to grab the kill credit. The box is there as well as Ron. He's in a heck of a lot of trouble, uses the redemption, and is actually going to survive. Even the bomb is Tussle. Down to about half health now. Heredi's already dead, but he just wasn't offering all that much to these fights. But look at the health bars. The GPL, oh, they are able to do it, and they clean sweep. And oh. is trying to run. Oh, good flash. Gets himself to safety, and Deathfire touch is not enough. Seros, the last man standing. And you'd wager this is definitely enough here for game one going to the GPL side in this best of three, Atlas. Fantastic work, as Seros is just going to get launched on. Does have the ultimate up one more time. These health bars are not high, as Dara is going to respawn. The Nexus turrets are falling down pretty quickly. One last bullet from Celebrity is going to do it. An open Nexus now, as Dara is on the fountain. The Summoner's Can Rift game looking to go to Southeast Asia. Can Japan save the Nexus? No, they can't. Celebrity's got the last bullet, and that is going to be the first win for Southeast Asia. We criticized Japan's Summoner's Rift performance earlier on the day, and we see it here once again. Their ability to control the map, the